Hello, and welcome to this presentation on Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorders, or FASD. FASD is an umbrella term for a range of permanent physical, cognitive, and behavioral effects caused by prenatal alcohol exposure. There is no safe amount of alcohol during pregnancy. Any exposure can harm the developing fetus. These disorders are 100% preventable by avoiding alcohol while pregnant. Today, we'll cover the types, consequences, brain mechanisms, and key scientific studies based on medical and neuroimaging research. FASD includes several diagnostic categories depending on the presence of physical features, growth issues, and neurodevelopmentally impairments. Fetal alcohol syndrome, FAS. The most severe form with characteristic facial features, short palpebral fissures, smooth philtrum, thin upper lip, prenatal or postnatal growth retardation, and central nervous system, CNS, damage. Partial fetal alcohol syndrome, PFAS. Similar to FAS, but with fewer facial features, still includes growth issues and CNS impairment. Alcohol-related neurodevelopmentally disorder, ARND. No visible physical features, but significant neurocognitive and behavioral deficits from CNS damage. Alcohol-related birth defects, ARBD. Physical malformations, e.g. heart, kidney, bone issues linked to alcohol exposure. Neurobehavioral disorder associated with prenatal alcohol exposure, NDPAE. Focuses on behavioral and cognitive issues with confirmed exposure. Prevalence estimates, globally tilde 0.77%, but 1 to 5% in the US and similar regions, often underdiagnosed. Prenatal alcohol exposure disrupts brain development at any stage, causing irreversible structural and functional changes. Structural brain damage, reduced brain volume, thinner cortex, abnormalities in corpus callosum, cerebellum, hippocampus, and basal ganglia. Neuroimaging shows smaller overall brain size and altered connectivity. Neurocognitive impairments, deficits in executive function, planning, impulse control, memory, attention, learning, visuospatial skills, and intellectual performance, often lower IQ. Behavioral issues, hyperactivity, impulsivity, poor social skills, adaptive functioning deficits, and increased risk of mental health disorders. Physical effects, growth retardation, facial dysmorphology in FAS or PFAS and possible organ defects. Mechanisms include neuronal death, inhibited neurogenesis, inflammation, and disrupted migration for connectivity. No reversal of core damage, but early intervention can help manage symptoms. On this figure, you can see schemes of measurements of the corpus callosum and brain in children with FASD and children from the control group. A. Linear measurements. B. Surface area measurements. Analyses of the structural MRIs acquired from children with FASD showed a number of morphological anomalies. Even a qualitative assessment without measurements performed showed that 40% of these children presented with thinning of the corpus callosum, which is the main white matter tract connecting the two cerebral hemispheres. The morphometric measurements performed in the study also showed statistically significant thinning and shortening of the corpus callosum in children with FASD, as well as decreased callosal area in the sagittal plane, also in relation to the whole brain area. In the related literature, there are a lot of publications reporting results consistent with the present findings. This is because children with FASD are often found with decreased volume, thinning, shortening, as well as an abnormal shape of the corpus callosum, 
particularly in its posterior part. You can find more detailed information about this and other studies in the description of this video. Scientific evidence comes from human neuroimaging, epidemiology and animal models. A 2018 study of over 6,000 US first graders found FASD prevalence of 1 to 5 percent, with conservative estimates at 1.1 to 5 percent. Neuroimaging reviews show consistent brain atrophy, e.g., reduced corpus callosum and cerebellar volume correlating with cognitive deficits. A 2017 global meta-analysis estimated FASD in children and youth at tilde 7.7 per 1,000, highest in certain populations. Animal models demonstrate ethanol-induced neuronal apoptosis and inflammation as key mechanisms. Longitudinal studies, e.g., Seattle 500, track lifelong neurobehavioral outcomes confirming persistent deficits in executive function and memory. These studies use MRI, DTI, and cognitive testing to link exposure to measurable brain changes. Next, I'd like to introduce you to the Seattle 500 study, also known as the Seattle Longitudinal Prospective Study of Alcohol and Pregnancy. This groundbreaking study begun in 1974 at the University of Washington, is one of the longest-running studies examining the effects of prenatal alcohol exposure. It has followed nearly 500 children from birth to adulthood, providing scientific evidence of how alcohol consumption during pregnancy leads to fetal alcohol syndrome, FAS. We'll review the study design key findings about the types of impairments, long-term consequences, and supporting publications, all based on rigorous scientific evidence. This is crucial for understanding the lifelong consequences of FAS, and remember, it is entirely preventable by avoiding alcohol during pregnancy. High prevalence rates and rates of misdiagnosis indicate that fetal alcohol spectrum disorders FASD, remains a serious public health concern. A review of neurobehavioral disorders associated with prenatal alcohol exposure examines the impairments characteristic of FASD, including impairments in cognitive function, adaptive abilities, and comorbid psychopathology. The emerging neurobehavioral profile of FASD is discussed and its success in differentiating between FASD, ADHD, and typically developing children. As rates of ADHD are significant among FASD populations, differentiation between ADHD and FASD is essential, as outlined in this paper, link in the video description. The Seattle 500 is a prospective longitudinal cohort study funded by the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, NIAAA. It began by recruiting 1,529 pregnant women from two community hospitals in Seattle who were in prenatal care by mid-pregnancy around the fifth month. Mothers were interviewed at home about their alcohol use before and during pregnancy, including quantity, frequency, variability, and binge patterns, five plus drinks per occasion. The study oversampled heavier drinkers and stratified for smoking to capture a range of exposures. From this, approximately 500 offspring, mostly singletons, were selected for follow-up representing varying levels of prenatal alcohol exposure. Assessments occurred at 11 time points, birth, e.g., APGOS scores, Brazelton Neonatal Behavioral Assessment Scale for Habituation and Sucking, 8 months, Mental and Motor Development, 4 years for Attention, Reaction Time, 7 years, IQ, Achievement, Classroom Behavior, 14 years for Attention, Memory, Cognitive Processing, Arithmetic, and up to 25 years, psychiatric interviews using DSM-5. 
for criteria for disorders like substance abuse. Methods included multivariate statistical analyses like partial least squares, PLS, to handle complex data. PLS created latent variables summarizing alcohol dose, e.g., combining 13 measures like average drinks per day and binge scores and outcomes, e.g., test scores for IQ or attention. Adjustments were made for confounders such as smoking, nutrition, socioeconomic status, e.g., parental education, other drug use, and postnatal environment. Examiners were blinded to exposure history, ensuring objectivity. Retention was high, with 400 to 500 participants at key milestones. The study identified dose-dependent effects across physical, neurocognitive, and behavioral domains. With no safe threshold, impacts occurred even at moderate levels, worsening with binge drinking. Physical impairments at birth, higher exposure linked to smaller size, low birth weight, shorter length, microcephaly or small head circumference, poorer habituation, e.g. increased tremulousness, fewer head turns and reduced sucking pressure. Growth deficits persisted with below average height and weight into childhood, but birth size effects became insignificant after eight months. Characteristic facial features in severe cases, FAS, included short palpebral fissures, eye openings, flat midface, short nose, indistinct philtrum, and thin upper lip, seen only at highest exposure levels via morphometric analysis. Neurocognitive impairments, persistent deficits in attention, e.g., more errors and omissions on vigilance tasks, speed of information processing, longer reaction times, learning and memory, especially spatial visual memory and arithmetic, an IQ, e.g., seven point decrement at seven years for two plus drinks a day. At 14 years, problems with response inhibition, phonological processing, and cognitive flexibility. PLS correlations between alcohol dose and outcomes ranged from 0.26 to 0.67 across ages, strongest for attention and memory. Behavioral and motor impairments, neonatal irritability and attachment issues, childhood lags in fine motor skills, steadiness, balance, despite normal gross motor, classroom distractibility, poor organization and social difficulties. Higher exposure tied to ADHD-like symptoms. 50 to 94% of FASD cases met criteria. Effects were heterogeneous. Not all exposed children were affected, but linear dose response patterns emerged, independent of confounders like smoking or family history. The study's longitudinal nature revealed persistent and evolving consequences into adulthood. Neurobehavioral deficits did not resolve with age. Instead, they contributed to secondary issues. By adolescence, 14 years, ongoing problems with arithmetic, word attack skills, and executive functions, planning, inhibition, affected school performance. At 25 years, Prenatal exposure doubled the odds of psychiatric disorders, odds ratios 2, including axis 1 substance dependence for abuse, e.g., alcohol use disorders, and axis 2 traits like passive aggressive or antisocial personality. Binge exposure in utero was a key predictor of adult alcohol problems, independent of family history or postnatal factors. Other long-term risks, increased emotional regulation difficulties, e.g. anger control, reading social cues, schooling challenges, peer interaction issues, and no catch-up in growth or motor skills. The study estimated FASD prevalence at about 9.1 per 1,000 births in the 1975 to 1981 cohort, highlighting a public health burden 2-5% of U.S. births affected broadly. 
Brain mechanisms inferred from deficits suggest alcohol's teratogenic impact on neuronal development, migration, and connectivity, leading to reduced brain volume and altered structures like the corpus callosum and hippocampus. Though the study focused on behavioral measures rather than direct imaging, for a list of key publications and sources, see the description of this video. The Seattle 500 study proves prenatal alcohol exposure causes irreversible, dose-dependent damage across FASD types, from physical features to lifelong neurocognitive and behavioral issues. Key lesson, no safe amount, prevention through abstinence is essential. Early screening and interventions can mitigate secondary effects. If you or someone you know is affected, seek medical advice for support. This research underscores FASD's preventability, protect future generations. Our presentation on alcohol and its impact on fetal development has concluded. Thank you for watching.